Don't worry, you're ready. Being at 3 15, 3 17 p.m., I'll call this meeting to order. And Steve Binder, who is be late, coming from a different, another meeting, will be late, but I will call this meeting to order. Um, the first thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda made by Supervisor Dowling. Second by, second. And by Supervisor Powers. Any discussion? All favor, somebody say aye. 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 All opposed? No, that passes by voice vote. Next item, approval of May 23rd, 2022 20, minutes. Powers move, uh, approve. Okay, second. Motion approved by Supervisor Power, seconded by Supervisor Conter. Any discussion? We all see them. All in favor, everybody saying aye. 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 Okay. Number four, um, public comment. Do you have any public comment? No one on Zoom. Nobody on Zoom. No one here in the audience. I'll declare that portion of the meeting to be um, done. Fifth, finally, update, Sunnyview Expo and construction update. I'll make this one brief because um, really there's not a ton um, that's happening out there. Actually, this will probably be my last update on it as, as well, to be honest. Um, if you um, want any tour of it um, or if you want to take a look at it, obviously you're more than welcome to always go across the street. Um, but basically the Sunnyview Expo project, we actually did a walkthrough today with the contractor. Uh, pretty much a final walkthrough, working through a punch list, um, the final items. Landscaper is finishing up their seating and their um, restoration actually today. So we have a gate that still needs to be installed, um, but ultimately by the end of this week, the project um, should be complete. Obviously, we're going to be working with the contractor throughout the summer, though, because um, grass is just planted. So we'll be working with them throughout the rest of this year to make sure grass is established and to uh, make sure the restoration is complete. Um, they did put up some temporary fencing with the project as well, so that way to try to limit uh, people walking through the restored areas and uh, to kind of limit the, the traffic to try to move the traffic to the openings the, um, for now until the grass is established. So at this point, uh, the project is almost complete. I would, I would say we are 98, 99% complete um, with just trying to round out the project and make sure that they finish their final items and that it's, it's completed the spec. So if anyone has any questions about the Expo project, um, I'd be happy to answer any further questions on it. I have a quick question, I know it's quick. I think about probably six years ago when I first became supervisor, there was a movement of foot to try and replace, rebuild, re the archway, and they were selling buttons, I bought buttons, I made contributions. Did that ever get done? Because I looked around and thought, I don't know where that archway is or where it was supposed to be. I know there was some fundraising for it. I don't know, Tom, if you know any more. I know that's supposed to be phase two, I think. Yeah, that, there was fundraising for it. They established something with the uh, Scottish Foundation. That's where the money is at. Um, and so it's still a work in progress. Right, that would be in phase two of the expo. Then part I won't part. worry about it. Yeah, that was incorporated in the engineering of the second phase when they okay. redo the front lot. Okay. And that is still in there. And the arch itself is sitting behind the pit pole building up in the old Restrict. Okay, so we have the we yeah. have the arch. It just needs to be re re. Um, we have the arch. We have some remaining. Tuck pointed or whatever you do yeah. the arches and. It'll be incorporated in the engineering of the next project. Okay, if perfect. Was, we don't want to place it in a spot that's just going to get moved right away, because next year it, it, the current plan and capital improvement um, plan is, um, and the committee will look at that again as we update it in, for twenty twenty three, is Expo Phase two next year for engineering. And then construction in 2024. So it's right around the corner. Okay. No. Just wonder what happened to the arch. Yeah, absolutely. And then I thought, well, maybe it's up, but I just don't know where to look for it. Okay. That's all I have. Jim, you ready? No. Rachel? My only, it could be possible, but maybe we show pictures when it's pretty much all done and show pictures before and after on the Facebook page. Or I mean, yep, we've been taking pictures throughout. I was going to do actually a uh, Facebook Live as well to walk through the site. Um, to obviously get a bunch of pictures, video. Yep, so we'll we'll probably actually do that this week while it's, um, you'll notice that there's really nothing out there right now because Life Fest will be starting to bring some things in this week, but really they're big setups next week. So um, 
we'll have plenty of opportunity to be able to. They're doing some final touch up stuff next week or tomorrow, so it's kind of holding off. Oh, I guess I do have one more question. The incident last Wednesday, yeah. was that person involved with the county or with the parks department? Or Okay. We weren't made aware of who it was, but no, it was not. Okay, that's all. <clears throat> we did find out who that was. There was no connection. Okay. okay. Um, well, on item number six, discussion, action, walk call, walk call, dam, master plan. All right, so we, uh, um, last week, Wednesday, we went out and we toured the site. Well, and maybe I should rewind a little bit more than yet. Um, so the walk-on master plan was approved last November to enter into a contract with MSA um, out of Baraboo, Wisconsin. Uh, we entered in contract to perform an hydraulics analysis of the site and then a master plan for the site. We also did some site surveying. Um, we'll go over that master plan here in just a minute. And then last week, we, um, so Tom and I have met with MSA multiple times throughout this process, just as a refresher, uh, especially since um, only two of the committee members were, were on the committee when this was approved. The goal or the initial thought, I mean, the goal was to be able to have, um, keep the pond safe in terms of from washing out. Um, Tom and the crew, they're out there multiple times a year to fix that embankment and eventually as you guys can kind of see it from the um, walkthrough last week, it's starting to create channels and canals that, you know, even if we fill those in, that soil is not going to get firm before another rain event because it's just so frequent. So um, we knew we needed to come up with a plan to solve that issue. We originally thought, um, and that's why we went through this process, um, it isn't a hundred year floodplain, so we cannot affect the floodplain even by 0.0001 inch. Um, and so we thought, though, that we could redesign and um, make modifications to the dam, smaller, bigger, um, more capacity to one, less. We thought there'd be a way to reconfigure them to be able to um, send more water to the creek. Um, ultimately, we found out that, um, and I know MSA gave that presentation, but just as a refresher, uh, we found out, maybe not the best map here, but we found out that the Highway 116 bridge and how wide it is here, since we cannot affect this, ultimately at the end of the day, this is what's holding some of the water back. And anything we do to the river dam or the creek dam, the pond dam or the exiting pond dam will not affect um, what is happening with the embankment. So that brought us to the conclusion that we need to then provide um, an avenue in which the water can flow during the higher rate events, but it's not gonna damage and cause for more meat. So basically the, the, the plan through this study was to, I'll just scroll down to the master plan at this point. You could definitely, uh, the full, the full write-up is in the agenda. Um, definitely feel free. It's very interesting stuff, honestly. Um, it's a very interesting project to work through. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, um, we decided to, that it would be, you know, to solve the issue that we have of maintenance and the potential that the embankment would eventually through a large rain event wash out completely and causing us to lose the pond and having even more uh, maintenance and having to you know rebuild this embankment completely we just uh, decided to go this route um, there's a lot of different things looked at as i mentioned on site for the tour a potential bridge however we realized it would be a bridge to nowhere and you would still need armament or some sort of reinforcement under it because there's still going to be wash under it we'd still lose the pond eventually um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, um, we have come to this master plan. The master plan um, includes um, repaving the parking lot, uh, site lighting for security, um, and obviously for use, asphalt path that leads to the current trail system just for better ADA access and uh, for better access, <coughs> um, a small uh, shelter, um, just a shade shelter. Um, we, because we're in the floodplain, we can't do a permanent bathroom, so we would just put uh, keep our our pad for, or we pour a pad actually for the the porta pot, uh, the portable toilet, and then we would on all the dams. So we keep the trail. We'd obviously do some work on the trail to widen it out to the ten feet and and freshen it up, and then around the trail along the dams, there's the catwalks. We would improve those catwalks so that way. Um, they're more accessible, add railings and ramps um, that reach up to those catwalks. Um, as you saw, they're, they're definitely not very accessible. 
uh, for people to get all the way around the pond if they were, if they're not passable if they're in a wheelchair or anything, that is, that's for sure. Um, so we would do that work. Um, the kind of the key area that I'm gonna zoom in on is I was kind of talking about it and I will show you, actually I should have had this up as well. I'm going to real quickly here, bring up another picture of the material. Um, but well, that's loading actually. So of course, it's gonna load faster than I can talk. So, all right. While that's loading, um, we would this area here would be slightly dipped, slightly lowered, still accessible, still a, a grade and a pitch that's accessible for people in wheelchairs and with accessibility issues. Um, and we would put an armor flex matting down, um, and I'll show you what that is on the other page when it loads. Um, that would allow the water during heavy rain events to flow, obviously it'll still flow out the exiting dam, but then obviously when we have larger rain events and it needs overflow area, it will be concentrated here. And then if it's a very heavy rain event, when it starts pushing back even this way, we'll do turf, turf reinforcement here, such as a geo grid, um, which I will show as well. Um, but the armor flex um, would be very similar to this product. And then this is just an example. There's other very similar products. You can see it's a flexible concrete matting. It was a pretty good close up. These basically flexible concrete matting. So that way, when you have those rain events, that's it's not going to wash out that concrete. It's not going to wash it out. So that would be the plan in that area. And there's also area over here by this dam down here because we do have that. If you recall, we have that washout that goes around the dam. So that would also help protect that dam. We'd have, we'd install more riprap around the existing dams. And like I mentioned, the <coughs> turf area would be like a geo grid, which is a plastic grid. Imagine like a chain link fence, but it's, it's thick off the, um, you know, off the ground and you put the topsoil in that. So that way, when the water rushes across, the topsoil can't just wash away because it's in that geo grid. Um, so it'd be something similar to that. That is the, I guess, I would consider this the meat of the project, the really that and the riprap of the things that we're trying to solve the issues. Um, all the rest would be items that while we're there, well, and I would say the accessibility parts of it, the catwalks and those types of things. The extras, I guess you could say, would be the, the parking lot, the site lighting, the, the piers, and the parking lot up on Highway K here. We would add that parking lot up there. Um, so that way, uh, single, the single track mountain biking trails that are now shown here, um, there's a better route here, so they're not cutting in. There was that cut through right around, there's about down here, off of Highway 116 that the, the state uh, DOT would like us to address. Actually, you can see the contour here. Um, so that is where they're cutting through. So those are the, um, that's the master plan. I'm scrolling down to, actually, you can see they show the armor flex here too. So you can see what that armor flex looks like. Um, down to the cost estimate. Just a little bit. Um, so the cost estimate uh, for some of the items such as the armor flex, the reinforced turf, the parking lot, um, the basically everything but the dam work, so like the catwalks and some of that, would be this $1,068,000 uh, or $68,000. The items below are related to the dam work, so this would be the catwalks, the, the concrete, the concrete abutment leading to the catwalk, the pedestrian rails, um, some armor mat flexing around the dams. Um, that would be 181. Then the, the um, engineering firm added a 20% contingency. We're not doing this project for two years. So as we get closer to this project, um, we would refine that cost because we still have to engineer the project. Next year, it's in the capital improvement plan for engineering. Um, so we would narrow down this even more as we go into more detailed design. So that way, um, by the time we ask for the full construction of the project, um, we would have this narrowed down that you don't want a 20% contingency going into the project. But since this is more of a master plan, um, a larger, more uh, magnitude cost estimate, that's where the 20% comes from. And then engineering, they have about a 20% as well, probably about 18. Um, I do think that is high personally. Um, I know, just to give you an example, the engineering on the ground and bolt landing came in at about 8%. 
and that's for final design. That was for uh, the master planning or the, the design permitting work we're doing now and through construction. So I think that number can definitely go down, but for budgeting purposes, uh, this is a good budget number. This is a budget number. Um, so when we are working on our capital improvement plan for 2023 through 2027, these would be the numbers we would work with. So we would work with 230,000 for engineering next year. And then we would work with the, um, the 1,250 and the two, so about 1.5 million for the construction itself. Um, that's kind of my narrative towards it. I will say, you know, as we talk about the master plan today and finalize the master plan, if there's anything this committee um, would like to added, removed, um, that's now is a good time to do that. So that way, basically the next time we present this project will be next year and it'll be to this committee and then it'll be to the county board um, asking for funding as long as the capital improvement plan doesn't uh, change, between, you know, while we, while we make it here, this, that this project stays in 2023. So, um, so just keep that in mind. And that's why these line items are in here as well. You know, if there's anything like fishing piers or the, or the, the uh, shelter or anything that, you know, maybe um, the committee doesn't necessarily want in the master plan or things you think are missing, that's what we want to talk about right now. So is there any way we get grants to help us pay for this? That's one thing. Yeah. Um, we could apply for stewardship grants for this particular project, the Wisconsin DNR stewardship grant. I would have to look. I cannot remember when the last time Winnebago County applied for a stewardship grant. Um, the stewardship grant, the reason I say that is because the stewardship grant cycle, um, if you have been awarded a grant within the last five years, you get minus points because they're trying to spread it around the state. Um, but I do not believe we have applied in a few years. Um, we might be outside that five-year window, I believe. Uh, Asylum Bridge even was not. Um, we have, I have been having some discussions with the NRDA, which is the grant we received with um, Grunman, whether or not this falls into the water, because the NRDA, um, the 400,000 we got for Grunman, it has to deal with the uh, Winnebago watershed and the Fox River watershed. So this might, um, but yeah, so there, and we did call on um, with the Wisconsin DNR in regards to their dam related grants. And unfortunately this would not, qualify for one of the dam grants. It is a, quite a big spawning area for game fish like northern pike. So if we can maybe go that angle, because once we're in the spring, it's not just a huge amount of spawning. Um, for some of the items or fixtures, I mean, could be an apartment with the local town or like, um, I'm not against, you know, like the bike fixing station or kiosk, could be talk to the local bicycle the groups who help pay for some of our all that. And I don't know how that's gonna be maintained and all that, that's one question I have, but I'm not against it, I'm just curious about this. I mean, absolutely. There's um, there's agencies out there, Foxes, Greenways. Um, <clears throat> there's um, actually this bike group um, out of Oshkosh. You know, when you're talking about a larger project like this and you talk about light fundraising, um, you know, the bike fix it station is in three, yeah, 3,000 is about right. Actually, where's that the kiosk? Oh, 4,500. It shouldn't be quite 4,500. That's, not, I think, on the high end, unless um, they've gone way up in the last two years, which with COVID, I don't see it as possible. Um, but those are good items here and there that a, a group, a user group like that, that's a good fundraising. You know, when you're talking 1.7 million, 4,500, that's, you know, small, but it's a good way to get buy-in from some of these groups that use the site too, um, so they can take ownership of some of it. Is there anything that jumps out at you that you think the county board or the or the county executive would say, well, you know, do you really need this? Could you do without that? You know, I don't think, I haven't heard anything from my county executive. Um, He's ours too. <laughs> yeah, sorry, so my, my, my supervisor, <laughs> yes, from the county is a good point. I have not heard anything from the county executive. Um, you know, when I've looked at this personally and I've looked at things, you know, the board might question or, the, you know, this committee might question, you know, I, I do look at some of those things like the shelter, you know, because you do have a lot of shade there. It is already a lot of trees. So there's a lot of shade in there. Um, that is um, about 40,000, you know, so that's something. The fishing piers, you know, when you look at the master plan, apologize, wrong way. Um, we do have the one fishing pier, as you remember. You do remember that some of the embankment's a little steep. Right. Could you maybe just do this fishing pier on the north end since this bank is a little steeper, this one's a little shallower. 
And then, you know, you can fish off of the dams typically. You know, we could look to remove a fishing pier potentially. Um, that would be less maintenance. Um, I'm gonna know. guess that nobody on the board is gonna say to you, well, this one's more deep and this one's more shallow. I'm gonna bet they don't know. Right, that. and what I'm saying is, you know, when you look at the cost, it's a $100,000 cost for two more fishing piers and you already have one. If they were to question something, you know, that's a larger ticket item that's, that I see is more, you know, like I said, I, I think the priority is this, um, is the, the riprap and the armor and the turf reinforcement. That is the how, how absolute much, How much need. fishing do we have over there? I know you said we have some good fish in there now, but yeah. is it being used a lot for oh, fishing? Yeah, every day. That's pretty much why it's used, is for then fishing. I don't see how they would, could balk about the fishing. Of course, people's is people, so. Yeah, and the weekends we'll get 20, 25 different tires down there. Really? Mm -hmm. um, some are bikes, some are fishing. Uh -huh. uh, during the spring spawning season, you'll get the parking lot almost full. Yeah, so, spring is heavy. <clears throat> and I'm presuming you, you want to get this approved and started next year and it will take a year or how long to finish? Yep, good point. Um, so kind of how we, and this is a good question because um, once again, with some new supervisors on the committee, so last year we started reframing our capital improvement plan because things were too tight and we weren't having enough time to actually plan and design things and make sure we're doing it right and maybe look at grant opportunities, look at donation opportunities. Um, so we changed our philosophy to and it, when, when possible. Sometimes it does make sense to put one project in one year because it's smaller, it's simpler, or we've already have done a lot of legwork, but would be engineering next year. So doing the final design, applying for any grants, um, doing the legwork and then going typically then going to bid November, December, January time period with construction the next year. So it would be done in 2024, the actual construction. Next year, we would do the more detailed design and engineering. When, when you see the county executive, do you just hand him your proposed budget? Do you talk to him? Yes. Because my point was going to be when you're making a presentation, you might want to say, um, you know, the, the fishing. Is, is good there sure. that we have 25 people a day mm -hmm. fishing there during, is that during the week time or is that an average for the full week or? Like on a weekend, we could have 25 on a Saturday. Okay, on weekends, 25, during the week, not, not during the week. The I, you know, we're only there sort of spot checking. Right. <clears throat> but there's always somebody there, almost always. Okay. As long as the weather's good. Too, yeah. Right. And it's usually during the middle of the day too yeah. when there's probably not. I, I guess I would say make, you know, make the point that, that it is, a facility and a, and the usage is being is in fact being used on a regular basis. And then one point I want to point out is we got a lot of flack from from Jerry Finch was one especially would do this is it's it seemed like you were doing everything in Oshkosh and you weren't doing anything out of Oshkosh. <laughs> and this is one of our um, premier parks outside of Oshkosh. I, I, All right. So what I mean this area down there which is you know, down in the lower part of the county, you know, more towards Utica, et cetera. This is our one of our premier parks down there. And the, people, the local people really like it. Okay. They, yeah. they like so it. I think you get a, a great point, Tom. I Yeah, I know how Jerry Finch was. And if we do this and we put some effort into, and Adam talked about Lafley Point and doing something there and appointing that out to the people, plus hopefully, not too far in the future, we're going to come to Peter Moore. We're showing the western part of this county, the rural part of this county. We care about too. It isn't just the Sunnyview Expo and the community park. And that's what I'm trying to convey is that it's more than this this big land, massive parks we have around here. But you're right, Tom. I think well, most of our acreage is not in Oshawa. Right. It's outside of Oshawa. Into Supervisor Powers' point. Um, you know, when we present this to the whole county board, we're going to start from square one because they haven't been part of these conversations. And, you know, one of the things to point out is that actually this single track bike trail is an Oshkosh company that volunteered to put it in. Um, so not only is it serving the western part of the county, people from Oshkosh and the populated areas come out here because single track bike trails are hard to find. Um, what does it and mean so by need them in Ash You were talking about the other tour. I yeah. know, what does that mean by a single track? So mountain biking, um, it's basically what it is it, for one bike at a time in a single file versus like the wheel wash, you can go through for us. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of thought yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah, see I these, some of these pictures. I wasn't really sure why that's a big deal. It seems like, seems like you might be happy to have 
Well, the reason is you can see it's bumpier. They have um, elements like this is a catwalk. If you go, if you actually go through there, you can see how like, they're jumping off the side. I mean, this okay, particular- so there's more adventure to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're not going to take a road bike on this, so you're, or you um, you know, younger kids probably- I'm not going to take my Schwinn out there. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. You're, it's, it's a little bit more, I think it's like a level two. Um, I'd have to check with them again, but I, I did it once. But that was enough. <laughs> That's enough adventure for you? Okay. It, it, it is a unique. Yeah, it's not like your straight wild wash trail, which are great. They have its place too. Yeah. Um, and then there's paved trails and they have their place. So this is, there's not as many of these in a city. So actually it is serving the cities as well. I, I have heard uh, people from Nina, Manasha, uh, Fox Crossing that come to this park too. And so what town is this closest to? It's not in Oshkosh. It's in Rushford. It's closest oh. to like Amro, Winnicott, okay. Eureka. All right. That area. Oh, yeah. On the itemized list, I don't see a tourist body on here. Do we rent one? Is that we one? rent one. Okay. Yeah, correct. We, we sure. run through race sanitation currently. Okay. Uh, so we've had a path. That means they can maintain it and they can work. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure bathrooms yeah. and parks are super important to me. Yeah, they okay. they come to clean them out. <laughs> yeah, That's where we rent them. Well, especially like if people are driving twenty minutes to get there, and right. then biking, and then you have to drive twenty minutes to get home. I yep. mean. That's and, a long time to go to the bathroom. Want, I would like to actually put a bathroom in here. The biggest issue and the biggest reason they said we can't is because it's in the floodplain. So Which is fine, but we'll so. have. But we do have some. Okay. I mean, you wanted to put an actual like like plumbing. A small thing? bathroom, yeah, yeah. but we can't do to the floodplain oh, okay. restrictions on building a permanent structure in a floodplain. I wanted to bring up, I talked to you on this earlier, when you present this, I thought it was important. How many acres this is, but it's attached, there's a few houses in the way, but it's sure. attached to that wildlife preserve. And mm -hmm. I forgot how many acres there was in that. They're Six, about equal. 64 in the reserve and 27, 28 yeah. in, the, in the dam site. So oh. just just short of 100. So that, that's a sizable mm -hmm. amount of property. And their bike, you could walk or bike to them to each one. You know, you could, in, in theory, and now granted, it's not the safest road, but in theory, you could bike, uh, park here with a nicer parking lot. You could bike over to the walk, uh, you know, nature preserve or walk so, over there. So that's what I'm going to bring up. Is, there, is the nature preserve close enough? And you talked about maybe improving that area that we concluded in this project and called the quote unquote walk call. I think that's a large that enough project when you're talking about the type of riprap and type of work we need to do there. It's going to be another, not as large as this project, I don't believe. Um, but I think it's going to, it would be a sizable project. Um, and I don't think there's an immediate need uh, for it. I, I think there could be issues down the road is kind of what I was getting at, um, you know, in the spring. But here, here is the Wacaw Dam. And the Walk on Nature Preserve, I believe it's already this parcel. Uh, this one then. Oh. So you can kind of see how close these are to one another. There's just two parcels actually in between them, owned by the same person. And then here's Walk on Creek and it's all of this. And during the tour, I had to ask what riprap was. I had never heard that term before. Yep. So, and I don't know if that's just, it, it's just me and it's, it's a very common term, but it's, you might want to make, you know, make sure that you don't just keep throwing that term out sure. and assume that the whole board knows because. It's Rachel, a, did you know what that was before we had? Okay. I don't it's think a shortened it's, version of riparian wrap. It's a, it's a shortened Re version of repairing. Riparian. Riparian. I don't know that That's word either. Armory. Oh. Stolen armory. But absolutely. Yeah. Don't <laughs> no. just, keep, just don't keep. And because there's such high ticketed items on this particular project. Yeah. yeah. No, then just like we did with the armor flex, um, you know, we would want to show the riprap, um, what that is, armor flex, the types of. Um, you know, piers we're looking to put in and the type of, uh, you know, just like there's actually pictures right here. And you can see the armor flex here if you looked at the, the master plan. Now it doesn't show a picture of riprap, but yeah, absolutely. We could always add that in or part, put that part of the presentation. Usually I put together a PowerPoint presentation or something uh, for when we actually present a larger project um, for, for approval. And, and just like it, the grub. If it has a longer name, the riparian, whatever. No, 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 no. <laughs> what was going to say? Large stone. Yeah. Yeah. I it's sort of just feel a, a loose armor. Sort of Maybe even more than one time. Remind us what sure. during that yeah. presentation, in case it gets passed by the first time. Maybe the second time. I'll admit, I heard of it, but I wasn't. The only thing I knew about it was we had to do some water. That's the only thing I knew. I didn't know exactly what it was. So okay. Well, I'm glad I asked the question because I thought I thought okay, everybody knows what this is, and I don't. 
No, this is really good information. It does remind me sometimes, you know, Tom and I work on a, on a daily basis and sometimes, yeah, we forget that we do. So, no, I appreciate it. So. Or maybe you shouldn't explain it and then you'll just sound really smart and be intimidating. Riff raff. What is that? Large we'll stone. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll, say, well, what do we want that riff raff for? <laughs> Is it, so do we have an action item for this then? So the goal today would be to approve a master plan. So that way we can put this in our budget for the capital improvement plan. And then when we all approve the capital improvement plan, that's, this is whatever we decide today would be in that plan. Um, and then ultimately when we actually go to ask for the project itself, we would use this plan, use this cost estimate to ask for the project dollars. So obviously we want the committee to approve a master plan first. So that way, you know, we're doing all the legwork here, taking the park tour, um, looking at it, looking at the plan in more detail. Are you okay if I say something? You, you, you ever, you right, as long as you don't mention rip rap. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to motion that we approve of the Waka Dam master plan and we are pleased with it. And the budget. And the motion to move. Power second. Uh, oh, moved by. You can, you can have Valley, second by Supervisor Powers. Any other discussion? Yes, I, I, I have a couple right. questions. One of them just hit me, and as soon as it hit me, I forgot what the hell it was. <laughs> Getting old. Um, the the shelter is included in this this time, correct? Correct. Okay, if there was some, if, if the committee felt strongly about something, that's why I wanted to remind everyone if we wanted to remove something now, we absolutely could, or add something now, we absolutely could. Well, obviously, if we add, I didn't see the price, but if there's something that wanted to be removed, and that's why I definitely wanted to include the detailed estimate in the packet too, because if there was something, it would be easier to just pull it. Well, I, I, the way you talk, I thought they're going to add that next year. To, oh, that's okay. Yeah, because so that's so like the shelter is an example here is line item for forty thousand. I, I, I'm I gotta be getting so old it's not real to me. That's a lot of money, but I don't know what concrete costs. Well, yep, yeah, it's for the it's for the pad, it's for the steel structure. This is an example of what they priced out. Um, when I put in a twenty by twenty all steel four post shade shelter in two thousand nineteen. It ended up being about twenty eight thousand dollars installed. So, and the pad was already there, so that wasn't even a pad. So, That's and typically when you money. put one of these pads in, um, it has to have a grade beam, which means, just like we're wrapping, I'll explain. It means that the pad is thicker on the outside edges. So, about eighteen inches on the outside is about two feet or eighteen inches deep. So that way, you can actually fasten something to your grade beam pad rather than just a four inch, like your sidewalk you walk on is only about four inches. If you fasten a large shelter like that to it and in a windstorm or that kind of thing, it could rip up the pack. So, all right, I just, like I said, 40,000. Right. I bought a couple of houses that were nice for that kind of thing. Yep. Like that was your goal. Like <laughs> <you're exactly. laughs> sure. Yeah, but did your house have any riffraff? Um, <laughs> so it had riffraff all over the neighborhood. If you pass today, it won't come forward again until next spring, am I thinking? Um, well, we would go up for RFP for engineering services. So depending on what happens with um, the finance department, if anything changes with the capital improvement plan. But I mean, last year we asked for Grunman in February, I wanna say, uh, for engineering. It wouldn't be a huge rush because the only thing is, is I shouldn't say that, because if we are gonna go for any grants, such as stewardship, if we do decide to go for a grant, like that, those particular grant uh, cycles um, end May 1st. So we, we don't have to have permits like we did for the Grumman boat landing, but we do have to have plans. So that way they can see what we're applying for. We also um, have the final, final cost. So yeah, uh, applications are due May 1st. So we'd probably, we'd probably bring this request January, February to the county board. And so our colleagues could change this on the board floor about Entities, but we shouldn't could we approve or not, right? What's that? I apologize. Well, let's say one of our energy, one of our colleagues thinks that oh, we don't we don't need to um, oh. appear, or we don't need uh, the 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 bike the, the uh, 
like a mold like thing they could do it at that level or anything? yeah so they i mean they ultimately they can make an amendment to the budget or to the you know to the basically they could make an amendment to the budget request mm -hmm. um when we go for this which you know is all right here which means they could remove something from the budget a line item from the budget um so yes that's why I asked if this group being the ones that were out there and has been talking about it and doing the work, you know, so that way you can speak, if someone comes and says they don't want the fishing pier in it, but this group feels strongly that it should stay in, the you guys can speak to that um, and to why you kept it in there. And because, you know, you guys are doing a lot more legwork than the couple minutes is on the fourth floor. Right. I understand. So that, yeah, I understand. No, but they could. Absolutely. I've been, I have another way. I've been another way where they've had to plan everything and I've had to give my sure. instructions. Early no, they sometimes they say, that. oh, no, 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 it's way past that point. Got it, got it. Um, now that you just brought up the shed, and, or the, excuse me, shelter area, I'm wondering right now it's using a butterfly roof, and I'm yeah. thinking with snow in Wisconsin, that's not going to end well. Can we switch that to a traditional gable or like a shelter? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so okay. this, this is more for concept. So when we do the final design next yeah. year, okay. when you just take that 40000 now granted, we can... Basically, yeah, that doesn't we, look good. We finalize the design. I'm more used to what you'll actually see in the Grunman Bowl landing, uh, which will go over here after this one, just a four post normal roof. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. This um, is sort of like a, a placeholder in the budget, and then the okay. final design will come later. A shelter similar to this design okay. costs 40000 okay. So a four post, less architecturally crazy sign, <laughs> yeah. for, for lack of a better word or the shelter would be in the same budget. Like actually that 20 by 20 I mentioned was just a square normal shelter and it was 28,000. So that okay. would be very similar. This, yes, it, with okay. a little extra architectural, it, yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor of moving forward with the master plan for walk all dam? I'm saying aye. 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 All opposed, okay. That passed by boys' school. Okay. Um, four zero. Um, number seven presentation: Grunman Boat Landing Project Preliminary Design. All right. Um, so this is just out there for presentation. Um, I know we're going to have a little bit busier meeting next month, so I wanted to um, run through, especially for the new committee members. Um, I, I know, uh, like Supervisor Powers was here on the board. Um, when they approve the engineering uh, for Grunman, but maybe not on these more detailed conversations about it. So I just thought, I'd, you know, this was a good meeting with a little extra time um, since we have very few agenda items after this. So just run through it real quick. We just, um, we did the park tour um, last week. So now you can kind of see on paper what we submitted. And it's very timely because we submitted this um, to the Wisconsin DNR for both grants and for permits on June 1st. Uh, we've actually already received um, approved permits from the DNR for this project, uh, which is good because we need those approved permits in order to receive a grant. Um, we're, the big one that we're waiting on still is the Corps of Engineers, uh, but they're still well within their timeline. Um, but that's also another pretty big one as you're talking about on the water uh, to make sure we have their approval. So what I included in the agenda packet was the full set of plans. What I'm going to focus on um, that's just for those that are really technically interested in what, you know, what the full, this is what we submitted to the DNR, but um, I'm just going to go to a little bit more colorful. We were in a pretty, as, as, as some of you know, um, so when we requested this in February, I mentioned the reason we were, why we were requesting it before other capital projects were being approved or requested um, was simply due to the timeline. Um, we, we were right up to the June 1st deadline in order to get this submitted. Um, so we uh, put together, usually I have a little bit more, kind of like the um, Wacom master plan. We'd have a little nicer, prettier, um, but th we did put some color and some, um, you know, a little bit prettier picture together here to kind of help illustrate it a little better. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of the layout. This, so this is what we're proposing for the Grumman Bolt Landing. Um, what was out there, um, just to remind you, when we did our park tour on Wednesday, is basically this half. Uh, basically, if you cut right down the center here to the north, all of this is the programmable bolt landing. Um, but even then, it cuts off about, oh, actually right here, right about here. So this is we, where we ate lunch, correct? Yep, okay. yes, yep. So we do add a little bit of length to the west, 
Um, so a little bit more parking, but then this bottom south area is what's all new down here. And then these two or three landings. So because the important part here was right now when it's busy, people have to back their truck and their and their boat launch, their boat trailer back it all the way to the water. Whereas if, if we increase it, they could in fact probably turn around and be able to drive. Yeah, they will be able to turn around uh, with us. That we needed to for sure solve that issue. Okay. Um, and then we needed obviously to solve the issue that more parking in general is needed as people are parking on the grass, uh, especially with the walleye run lately, um, the last week or so. Um, Grumman has been very busy. Um, so this is actually GIS. This is our current layout. Um, just to, so what um, Supervisor Powers is talking about is I'm going to take this measurement here for you. It's about 550 feet, but if you parked in this last stall, and even, I mean, if you parked even in this last stall, uh -huh. and you had to back up your boat all the way to the landing here, it's about 550 feet. So you're backing up a trailer and your truck, and you know some of these are getting pretty big, yeah. and you're backing it up down this two-lane road all the way down here. Now, there's really nowhere to go out here to turn around. So... Yes, yeah, so when it's not busy, you can kind of turn around in a parking stall or something like that. But when it's busy, there's you're backing up. Okay, now someone might say, but you're going in the direction you want to go because you have to get that trailer feet first into the water. Yep, but the problem is you're backing up with a big trailer and a big truck and you can't see people behind you. And then, okay. So whereas this way, you back out of your stall and now yeah. you drive around and then you drive around here pull this way and back in. So okay. really you're just kind of doing a U-turn or a yeah. Y-turn here, a U-turn yeah. here versus backing all the way down here. Okay. Um, the other thing it solves then too is because we're parking on the grass and, and there's just not enough parking is it does double the size of parking. So we go from about 62, 64 stalls to 122, I believe it is. Um, actually it's not on this. That was in, it's on one of these, but. The point is, is we're basically doubling the stalls. We're adding more uh, car parking, as you can see here too. Um, so that way um, more residents can um, see the, you know, we don't have a lot of public property, whether it's cities, villages, counties um, on the body of water anymore. Um, so to be able to access Lake Winnebago is also just another benefit for families if they want to come see the water. Obviously there's not a playground here or, or a lot of amenities like that. There is a, there is a kayak launch um, and then down here, I'll zoom in, would be the bathroom. This would be a uh, pit toilet bathroom uh, because water and um, sewer is out at County A. So we would need to put a well in if we were to go water, which we could. Um, it just would have added cost to the project. So we, we opted not to. Um, and then the shelter, which I'll scroll down and kind of show what that would look like. I'll kind of show what the bathroom would look like. I'll scroll down. Um, we would add all of this light gray is um, concrete sidewalk, so that way every, everything is accessible, so you can get to the ADA, fully ADA floating kayak launch um, via concrete sidewalk, and then you can see you can get to the seawall here uh, via the concrete side, sidewalk, so that way you can load your boat right from the side here. So um, this yellow is a gravel um, walkway, just because we don't quite need and per, uh, you know, the asphalt or gravel just cutting through here. So this is just a nice convenient path though, uh, closer towards the lake. And then our kiosk, our pay station would still be down here. Um, all of these items on the north and south side that you'll see these circles are stormwater drainage because whenever we add more impervious surface or when we approve a site, we do need to add stormwater and storm treatment. Um, so, uh, or water treatment. So these would be the stormwater treatment biofilter areas. I'm going to, oh, I apologize. I missed a few things here. Um, these two um, docks here, piers, are the, were those existing piers you saw out there. Um, then we would build another one uh, to, to mirror it for this one over here. And then this would also be another floating pier. So the idea of these, and this came from um, just kind of a reminder, uh, we've surveyed the public, we've met with the public in person, um, just specifically on this meeting. Now that was in 2020. We, I had a meeting with uh, you, the user group um, that's been very active with this project. We had that in May as we were starting to finalize the design. We wanted to get their feedback on certain elements. The idea of this dock is so that way, if you're on your boat and you need to use the bathroom, you can just tie up here without 
taking up a spot. So that way if people are loading and unloading, you're not taking a spot up there just to go to the bathroom or to go get something from your truck. Um, you can just park here and then go do that. Um, also, this is a waiting area. So if, you know, if it's full here, you can park here, wait here until, until they're ready. One thing that is not in here, and the reason it was not in there is because of the permitting process, is we do need to dredge. Um, and what that means is we need to pull sediment material um, out of this bay area. The reason we need to do that is because it is too shallow. Could you show me where, um, where, and where, actually, are, you, where are you dredging? I'm going to go to here. Let me, let me go to here. It's okay. easier to show the blue. Okay. So this area here, okay. we need to dredge. The reasoning is, it, and this happens with a lot of boat launches and a lot of boat landings. This is a, I, will, I don't want to say it, it is routine, but routine in the sense of, you're, you know, you're talking 10 years, multiple years, um, but you go in and you basically dig up sediment that has floated into this area, causing it to be shallower and shallower. Um, and so this part of the project, I want to highlight it because it is not in the estimate at this time. Okay. The reasoning is because, as I kind of um, said, is that our grant deadline was June 1st, and we also needed to have our grant our permits in by the time um, they talked about the grant in August. To dredge, um, it requires an individual permit is what the DNR calls it, which means it's a minimum of 60 days. You have to have a public hearing. Usually they take 90 days. Now, the Wisconsin DNR has 1.75 million um, in grant funding for all inland lakes. So the whole state of Wisconsin inland lakes. So we're asking for 900,000. Most likely, which is 50% of the project, most likely we're not gonna get 900,000. If you get pleasantly surprised, that's a huge win. Um, but most likely we're not gonna get 900,000. So we did look at it and we did say, uh, we did take a we made a strategic decision to basically leave the dredging out of there because we did not want to miss the deadline and get in in September for the second round when there's not as much funding left anymore. So we felt that by getting in the first round, we're going to get more funding even without having the dredging in there than if we waited until September. Um, so this part of the project will be added back in when we go to the county board to request funding for the project. It's just not part of the grant. We estimate that this part of the, the process will be about roughly about $100,000. Um, so just keep that in mind. I just, you know, I'm showing you the plans that we submitted to the DNR um, and for the grant. Be? What's that? When will that be? So our plan is to, so we here on August 9th on the Wisconsin DNR grant, it's a Tuesday. Um, we, they actually hold their hearing and after those meetings, when they decide, um, I have to present on the project if we're selected and that kind of thing. And then they decide how much funding they're going to give every project. We should actually know at the end of that day is what I've been told. <coughs> Excuse me. So then once we would know that if everything lines up right, we would then go to the parks committee in September. And then that would be county board in October to request for the money for funding the project itself. Because I don't wanna go obviously to the county board until we know all of our grant dollars and what we're actually asking from the county board. So that dredging will be put back into the project that, and then we'll do the permitting for the dredging, you know, this fall and into winter. Uh, we have plenty of time to do the 90 day permit before we build the Grunman Bowl Landing, but it wasn't enough time for the permitting process. What do you put all that sediment? Um, De depending on it shouldn't be contaminated, you know, PCBs and that kind of thing, you'd have to actually put it uh, to landfill that can take contaminated soil, otherwise typically landfill. Okay, I have a question. Yep. That, that little state of Florida thing hanging yeah. out there. It, break water. Is that, okay, so is that man-made? Did you put that there on purpose? Yep, that was man-made when the ground and bowl landing was originally. The idea is it's to protect um, the landing area so there's less waves. Okay, because I looked at it, I thought that doesn't look like it's in the way, and I wasn't sure yeah. if it was there. It's purposely on the way. In okay, the way, yeah. All right. And there was, and there have been discussions with the user group and with um, staff of whether or not to extend the breakwater if you're extending the launch. But everyone felt that the dredging was more important than the breakwater extension. Okay. We'll continue to look at that. It would be the same permanent process as the dredging. Um, but yeah. what, what is what is on that on that um, piece of Florida? What, um, it is just, and I. Is it, is it grass? Is it 
is you it? can kind of see a little bit here. There is like a trail. Um, we do kind of maintain a small trail. You oh. can actually kind of see it right there. Okay. Um, and people. So I was wondering if you could just just pile up more of that dredging on top of there. Like no. That trail, you could do that. No, and and people can fish off of it. Um, oh. So we do like to keep it level so people can fish. Okay. And then I'm going to use that word again: riprap and large stone is on the outside because what that does is it protects the waves. So okay. it's a good example of what riprap does is it protects against the waves, just washing this thing out. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to. Um, so I'm going to. Just... I will say I was impressed by our tour because I'm not a fisher person, and so I haven't been to, and I don't have a boat, and so I've been boat dock, boat launches, and but I was impressed with how nice our parks are. We try to keep them in good shape. I mean, you can tell like the parking lot needs work <laughs> and some of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's all stuff that we're working. We, when I came in, I was aware of that we just need to make sure we keep up with a little bit more of that maintenance. Okay. So, but yeah, absolutely. We have some great properties out there. And I think just getting more people aware of them is really important. Um, we are adding site lighting um, with this project. I was just scrolling down to some of the more pictures that I can show you, but some, uh, site lighting and then the security cameras I was talking about as well. Um, okay, so this is an example uh, oh, and they don't have the picture that we didn't include the picture, but this is an example of <coughs> just to give you an example of what these look like. So they're they're precast, which essentially means they're poured um, yeah. and then they're brought in. I mean, this is this isn't the exact same, but you kind of get the concept. They're basically just built off site. They bring in the whole building and they just set the building on top of the foundation. Um, and, it's just and, one. And that's a that's a bathroom. Yep, and it's it's a bathroom. Um, you know what? But there's I, no water. It's just a it's just a sand. And is it possible to? So have... they get pumped every um, every so often. Is it possible even if you don't build a? Um, Septic, or I mean, even you know, is there any way of having, you know, some sort of water for hand washing purposes? We'd have to dig a well. You'd have to have a well. Mm -hmm. We'd have to dig a well. Water would just be way too expensive to run from, if it's even at County A, because all the residents in that area have a well. Didn't you say that there was a well on that property? It's a well, it's an old well from an old house. Um, we would need to abandon that well and, and drill a new one just because with arsenic in that area, it doesn't have a casing and that kind of thing. So these these are the, just to kind of give you an example, these are the type of um, bathrooms and they have the stacks. Very similar to a state park um, campground type um, bathroom. Actually, um, Greenfield, you know, Green, London. London has one, uh, our engineer sends us a very similar picture, but you know, they can be similar. They can be wood like this. They can be all um, concrete. They're basically just pre-designed buildings. You just set in place. What would ours be? Um, the one we were looking at was this one. Okay, but I mean, is it, is it wood similar. or is it concrete? What concrete, is it? concrete, like a, a mason block, very, um, yeah. Some, you know, something like this probably wouldn't have the brick, but that's just, that's and just- And why is it different. called a wet restroom? If there's no um, this particular one is. Um, there is a dry version of it um, oh. right here. Okay. And then my next question: When we took a tour, when you counted, when the whole board took a tour of things May 16th. Yes. Um, yep. The highway department, whatever the building was and how it was constructed, and there were other buildings built about the same time in the 60s, I think. Um, the the, the outside material was sucking in moisture and there was growing mold between the walls and that was happening to everybody. What, what is the, um, what's the, comp the composition of this? And are we gonna be able to make sure that we don't have sort of, sort of spongy yeah. outsides that are sucking in water and making mold? So unfortunately I was on a tour and I'm not 100% sure what the material is of that, of that building. The material of this building, and I built, a, or I was part of a, the group that built a new uh, public works parks facility at the last place I worked at. And it's, it's a precast wall is a wall that's, imagine um, basically they, they pour a slab of concrete and that is the wall. Um, then they just put that slab of concrete up and that's your wall. Can so, you check 
with with highway and yeah. find out what because apparently what we were told as i recall there were all kinds of buildings not just county like mm -hmm. all kinds of buildings built at that same time this is like sure. wow this is really great and it turns out they're all sucking in water and and 30 40 years down the road um yeah you got mold growing in, in the buildings i know you'll see a lot of warehouses are insulated places this is about to be insulated. is that the difference I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the material yeah. they use out there. I do know this porn place. Um, it's a, there's actually a company out of Mequon um, that that does a lot of these. Now, granted, this would be coming from a a, a company that just does bathrooms, so it would actually probably come from a different state because I don't think there's a company in this state that does these particular ones. Um, but basically, it, if you look at a lot of new warehouses, you look at a lot of these concrete buildings. That's how they're being built now, um, and they're built with these. We. Now, granted, our building was only five years old. We didn't have any moisture issues with the precast. Um, it was either that or building a metal building. And the metal building, you, we, we opted. For, now, you wouldn't do a metal building for a bathroom anyway. But, you know, another way you could do these bathrooms, you could do a block design. Um, it just costs a little bit more because there's more labor to it. Um, but you could do, there's a lot of restrooms at parks that are just blocks, um, you know. So, yeah. but it's lower maintenance. You don't have to. You know, worry about rotting wood. Um, you don't have to worry about um, as many spiders because of some of that kind of stuff. So it's just a slab of concrete, and they basically put it together as a puzzle piece. Okay. So I I have not heard personally of, of issues with this type of build, um, and it's been they've been doing it for a long time. Uh, Myron does a lot of these, for instance. Um, Cal, uh, yeah, Keller. I think we, on the tour there's a lot of places that it, it was built about the same time and had the same construction. Hmm. They were now painting. And that the was stone. a while ago, too. So they were painting you, the stone to keep them from, sure. from being sucking in, sucking in rainwater. It might have water. something to do with the density of the material, too. Um, you know, and, and at that time, they might not have known and they probably learned from that. But the density, but if it's too loose and it allows moisture to get in. But yeah, it's hard to say. The, I mean, I can check with Bob and see. What's, what the, what's the soccer, the new soccer complex? <laughs> that, I believe, is a common, I believe that's block. I believe that was block construction. Obviously, there's a combination of some wood, but that too with the with the lean to and the shelter. They got a holy tank or yes. Uh, actually, let's go back to the plans. I believe that's shown right there. Yeah, um, you can see the two holding tanks underneath. Actually, um, one for each bathroom. Um, oh, so those are put in right with it. And those are the things that get sucked out by some company. Yep. Yep. They come in. There's a. Uh, Another, yep, right. So this is looking from like the top down. Okay. Um, these squares are in the back of the building, and those are where the, you can hook up to clean them out. Okay. Where they where they would hook up to clean them out. Oh, there would not be water up there. No, there would not be water. So these would be dry. Can we add in hand sanitizer? We could. Perfect. I mean, and ultimately, at the end of the day, we could add back in water. It's just a budget issue or a budget question. Typically, a well is about 30000 That's for the well itself, 20, 30. It depends how deep you have to go. It really does. Well, if you're, excuse me, if you're, if you speak correctly, if you're using it for toilets, mm -hmm. you can't just pump the water right from the lake. That wouldn't get permitted by the DNR. Well, it's, and it wouldn't be I poured by water. You know what I want to say. Uh, yeah, no, I know, I know, but we got to follow the rules. Um, but so it's going to be pumped one way. It's going to be pumped from the lake yeah. to hand washing. No. What? Oh, no. I'm, I'm talking something different. You mean I'm, having a flush toilet? Yeah. No. I can, oh, I can understand. I can, it, I can understand the purpose. Look, okay, sorry. They're pumping it out. They're not putting it back into the right. lake. So if you have a large but then we would have to kitchen. also build them out. So basically, have a much bigger once, tank. once we do water, once, well, I was going to say at that point, you're gonna, you might as well do a mound if you're to have water. Um, so that, I mean, at that point, you're, you're probably putting in a mound system in a well. And, you know, you're probably, you know, and then adding all the piping, you know, and everything. I am going off the top of my head, but I, I do know it'd probably be about 40 or 50, probably about 50,000 more. Now, the whole project, as you'll see here in a minute, is about 1.8 million. Maybe it's worth it, but that's you know. So, and that's something we can we can definitely ask Grave, who's our engineer, to say and say, hey, if we were to put these in, can you give us an estimate? Well, if it's water, I've heard lots of women. I don't want to say women, but guys, I they would rather have a flush, I'll call it an outhouse, mm -hmm. than the dry, the smell for some reason. If you had a well, 
and it's you're not drinking it. You're you're you're, you're pumping it out anyway. It's not so much that I don't like. I don't like these outhouse shelter things either. My yeah, biggest concern it, is huh? is not because it smells, because yes, it does, and you just sort of like hold your breath and hope you can get through it. But afterwards, I want to be able to wash my hands. And oh, well. and if you are pumping in, pumping in lake water, and say this is not potable water, it's only for washing your hands. Are my hands clean? In my mind, they'll be cleaner than what I was, what they were before. Is that is it really? Are they really cleaner? I don't know, but I, I like the idea that I at least have the, san, so, the sanitizer and the, some kind of water. Yeah, I, I, I I'm ninety nine percent chance sure. You know, I'm, don't there's a chance that I'm wrong, but I do not think that we can just pump through the lake. Okay. So I think we'd have to put in a well. Um, and I'm not saying we can't do any of that. We can. Um, like I said, it's just a matter of cost. Yeah. So if that's something that the committee would like to explore, then I would recommend we, then I recommend I work with Grave to look at that option between now and but now. So that way, by the time we cut, once we find out about the grant or, or potentially we can add it to the grant still actually, if we we might be able to still add it to the grant if we can uh, modify our grant amount. Um, but once again, it's kind of like the, the dredging. We're already asking for an amount that, you know, we'll probably get less than that amount, but you always ask for the, the minimum or the 50%. Um, but that way, when it comes back to the committee in September for, you know, approval to go to the board, that you have the, the necessary information. Not that we get to September and say, we still really want to look at this water option and I don't have any prices, we, we would want to have, you know, A and B, so that way you can make a decision of how we're gonna move forward. Could you estimate what it costs to maintain this well? I mean, that'd be one thing I- Well, yeah, we, we, I, we I have them in the park. Rachel, well and I hear Karen about having something to, to wash or clean your hands, but what I'm also hearing from you is maybe you don't necessarily have to have a well to have water do that. I think to have sanitizer or, and stuff like that. I don't know if in a public restroom, though, if we can basically say the water's not portable. I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. It sounds like a liability. Yeah, I, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, you're putting in a well anyways. At that point, <laughs> I guess it'd be an hour we have something to say on any. Well, and at that point, if you're digging a well, it's going to be portable as long as you're going far enough down it. I mean, you're digging a well, you might as well dig. Yeah. You know, you might as well dig. As, it's a public space. We might as well dig then as far as we need to to make sure it's safe, portable water. But I don't think the bathroom, the dry bathrooms don't bother me, to be completely honest. Um, but I would like to have like a hand sanitizing spray or something in there that would make me feel a lot better. Um, yeah, and, other and than the that, state parks definitely do it. Uh, yeah. You have to, just simply because. <laughs> yeah. But. And the dry bathrooms have come a long way from where they used to be. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think it looks great. <laughs> if the committee would like me to get a price from Grave or an estimate from Grave, I absolutely can. What do you? Let's say just see. I, what do you? What do you want to look for? Estimate or price or no? I mean, it's up to you. Well, three. It doesn't cost anything to ask. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay so yeah. look at that. It's yeah. Like, I'll. I'll. We'll so that way, when September. we do get to the point of decision, we know what the the price difference is. So that way, if someone does. I mean, I, I think this would be a topic that there could be a question at the county board level. Same thing what you guys are asking right now. So I don't think, I agree. I don't think it necessarily hurts. I'll talk to Grape about it and, and see at least if we can get a rough estimate on that. Anytime you, that, that puts a whole new bite on everything. Huh? And you should have that porta potty and our, the outhouse, whatever you want to call it. Try that. Uh, you might want to have the, have a pump house. So you might want to have that right there. Going right into the building in the back. Oh, a well, you're saying if we have a well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would put it near it. Yeah. Yeah. You probably landscape a little bit around it, put it near us. So, and then you can have your fish cleaning station. Okay. Well, that, I was, I thought we were going to do well, that. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, I don't want to change the subject, but I mean, the reason why we don't have a fish, a fish cleaning and or a boat cleaning station is because we don't have a, well, a water source or whatever. 
Yeah, I mean that would also add more cost to it again too. And and, and what if so, and it's it's cost, run more, more, and what if we got more maintenance efficient costs. groups or someone to sponsor either one of those, whether it be a fish station, fish cleaning station, and or a boat wash station? What if we put out to them, hey, we, if you help us somehow, the cost of this that's put in for us and maintain it, would we look at maybe doing that? Maybe was that when the well, my big objections with Karen, oh, she's on the board. Don Nesman didn't want it, but maybe we can bring down the cost or we can do something. Could, could be done. It could be. Let's put it this way there's essentials that we're looking at now. <coughs> we're trying to butter it up a little bit if we could get by. I, I would agree. I, th I think what we have here is, is the basics exactly. Where, yeah. And like, I would agree. I'm not saying you haven't, Adam. I mean, I know we've had fishing groups talk to us about other projects. Mm -hmm. Well, when we talk to audits from whoever, say, hey, this helps benefit you. And, and do issues. keep in mind, like I mentioned in May, we did meet with a group that's been very vocal about this uh, project. And um, they're the ones that brought up dredging. They're the one, you know, so we did meet with them too, uh, or the users in regards to this project. I would think you have, I think a lot of people have the visionary. Oshkosh is the only damn city in Winnebago County. Right up the road is Nina Menasha, is it not? Yeah, oh, I this mean, is right between Nina Menasha and Oshkosh. And you've got the great counter on there saying how many people mm -hmm. utilize this. I mean, we got a seller. Yep. Had an airplane had been sold. <laughs> I ain't going to give up on that. Don't get on that. I'm sorry. Um, so, the you have discussion there? Adam, you have enough to go on? Yep, for, yep. Uh, I will um, <laughs> I'll look into the, the water and mount. I know we've at least had the conversation, so we'll be um, I'll be grateful. Yeah, great won't. We'll 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 get some prices. Um, and then this is the shelter. Um, this is the last piece. Uh, this well, is the last perfect two. shelter. This is the shelter it's I was talking about. <laughs> perfect. Um, this one. It's lovely. So we'll look at the estimate here real quick. Are you gonna put a table in there? Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. I hope so. That's just the shelter. That shelter. That's just no, bring your own blanket. Get down website. there. You have to lay down. Um, your blanket. This particular shelter. Just to give you an idea of the difference. Um, roughly seventy one thousand. Now this one is bigger though. This one seventy <laughs> one. Right? Now don't forget this. This we need a structural pad for this uh, concrete pad. And this one is larger. This one is twenty by twenty four. <laughs> the other. How many, how many tables would you put in there, or could you? Uh, I think we we're talking about four. <laughs> okay. uh, like, four. Like four, like we were sitting at. Yeah. Like the two we were sitting at. Yeah, we probably could do four this way. Okay. Um, I like it. The total project cost, and that's all steel, all steel. Oh, and there's tongue groove wood on underneath. We we added a few things that make it look a little nicer. You can just leave just and uh, steel all by itself um, underneath. But that you know, so that drove price up a little bit. Um, in total, for everything with this project, um, engineering included, which we've already we've already approved engineering, um, is 1.6 million. So that's why I'm not doing the 1.78 because we already have engineering approved. That's what the, uh, this is what Crave approved. There is a contingency, as you can see, their contingency is a little smaller because we've done a little bit more detail and, but it's still, you still need contingency with COVID and with not um, bidding this out. I, our goal with this would be to bid this out in January. As we, I know it's been discussed at the county board level. It's been discussed by me at committee level. I do know, you know, we need to bid this out early so that we, we get on a contractor schedule early. Um, so that's why the funding, we'd be asking for the funding this year, even though it's a project for next year. I know that kind of goes a little bit against what the county has been doing in terms of approving projects. Um, you know, like Bob was here in April or May to ask for his project for this year. We want to make sure we get the best pricing. So, and this is a very specialized job. It's a job on the water. There's only so many contractors. Uh, we don't want to end up in a situation where we have one bid. Yeah, yeah. Which we we know how that works with. <laughs> I, sure. So yeah. I, I guess I will say one thing. I will say with this project, it is a project on the water. There are less contractors that do projects on the water. However, um, last project I did on the water, we had about five contractors bid. That was a bridge, so a little different than this. Not all bridge contractors will bid on this. Um, but some of them will. There were a few that would definitely probably bid on something like this. So now what are you talking? I, I'm missing something here. On the water. Just just building on the, building on the water. Yeah, but, it's they're, a, it's but a they're not coming. 
the builder bringing it by a boat, they're gonna come down the road. That would be the only. Yeah, but to do some of this work, like the seawall and that kind of well, thing, okay. um, and to do the dredging, you do need you need a barge. You need um, you can do some work from land, absolutely, but you do need a barge, and you need to have experience building on the water. So, and if you don't have a barge, so here here's kind of where it comes in. If you don't have a barge, you have to rent from somebody. A lot of times you're renting from the one or two contractors who do have a barge that's probably that's also putting a bit on the project. Oh, we already know who his name is, okay? But there's the point is is there's there there are contractors on there, and my point being is we want to get this out to bid right away in January. We want to keep all those contractors involved and to make sure that everyone knows about it and it gets out early. Now you you're not personally going getting the bids, are you? No, no, I don't no, think so. We we well, but I work with Grief. And I work with a neighbor, uh, the Expo project. Um, I worked. I, I made phone calls to contractors to make sure we had enough contractors. Absolutely. Well, okay. I mean, yeah, we are, we hire someone, of course, and we're paying them one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. We want to make sure they're doing their job. And Graves great. I've worked with them before. They do their they do their homework. Um, but oh yeah, I call people too. What's that? Seventy-one thousand for what? For the shelter. Over the shelter, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember it's commercial grade, it's it's all steel. It's as you had a poor basement. <laughs> that, and in, that was what year was that, Jim? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, that was 2009. <laughs> and that was 15,000. That's a lot of concrete. Yeah. Prices have definitely changed. I'm not doubting you guy. I saw what what Steams Park where Larry Lawrence Father um, lives, but they had to pay for their little shelter for a park, yeah. <laughs> And that seventy-one thousand includes install, <laughs> includes the materials, and includes the pad. So it's not just the materials. Um, but no, I know. My, yep, I know. <laughs> um, Steve, we are. I'm sorry, Steve. We are on item seven. Goodman boat landing. I know you got a late. Do you have any questions, concerns you want to relay to Adam? Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Okay. That's all I have on Grumman. I'll okay. If anyone has any questions. So September we're going to have awareness, just you know, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the goal. Okay. That's the goal. I mean, as long as the grant award comes in on time and everything. And so when we present as the county board, November, December, I think one thing we're going to make. I'm the, hoping October. Okay, October. Yeah. One thing we'll point out, I know, one other member on this committee will is that we want to do it early so we get a number of bidders. We just get one bid. So I think we want to be out to bid in January. Maybe even December would be great. That might be pushing it a little bit, but we want to be out to bid in January. All right. Worst case, if I have February. Item, all done with that item? Mm -hmm. Item seven, or not eight, I'm sorry. Informational budget transfer tractor replacement $39,950.33. Yeah, and I'm not sure, honestly, I'm not sure if this is my first informational only, but when I've been to PNF, I'm not sure if they've gone to the committee or not, so, but I wanted to keep you guys in the loop um, 100%. So these go to personal and finance. So, um, I worked with the finance director on these. These go to personal and finance as an informational item only. Um, what they are is it's a budget transfer within a already approved budget. So it's not like it's from a different account or it's not asking for more money. Um, what it is, so in the case of the tractor, for instance, so we had when we went into budget season, I had requested with the county exec um, a truck and a tractor. Our tractor is from 70, uh, Tom's gone now, 72, 60? I think it was in 72. I'm not going to go further back. It might have been from the 60s even. We still have it. You can, oh, you guys saw it on the tour actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that old tractor, um, it still runs, um, but yeah, it, it was time. Um, what ended up having is the pickup truck just with everything with uh, uh, purchasing a vehicle right now. We, we weren't able to get on the list for a pickup truck. So I requested with the county exec to basically swap. Um, we, the, the tractor he took out for the, or yeah, the tractor he took out, putting that back in, taking the pickup truck out. And then um, putting the pickup truck, um, we'll, we'll ask for it again next year. Um, so then we'll try to get on early and, and get it into the budget. So basically what we did is we bought the new tractor um, with the same amount of budget room, because uh, it did work out that they were, in this case, it worked out that they were, were to be 50, 000. well, we asked for 10,000 for a plow blade, the truck we asked for um, 40,000, and the tractor was able to fall within that 40,000 range too, even with the implements that needed to be added to it. So, so that's, that's what this item is. So as you can kind of see on so, these budget transfer forms. So you're getting a tractor, right? We have the tractor. Okay. So 
Just understand this whole process. So I get no. So to understand this whole process. The did Steve and his PNF committee agree to this? Approve of this, or does so? Is this personal. Is this the I ran. Financial department? So I called the finance department before we went through with everything, and then I asked you to wait for the tractor. Not they said we didn't because I guess it's presented, and I'm not sure where this comes from in his manual or the personal finance committee manual or the county manual county code but basically this item or these two items are for informational only so i don't i don't know if you i know you weren't personal finance even before i don't know really whenever i've had these items when i because i've been to a lot of personal finance committee meetings lately there's really not much discussion on them other than just me explaining it to them yeah i think we approve all budget transfers yeah and that's budget transfer because you had it for a pickup truck and you're using it for a tractor so yeah i, I don't think you know yeah, I, I don't know why. I'll be honest. I, the only reason I believe that Director Keller told me it's only for informational purposes is because it's the same exact. You'll see here, um, it's the same account. Um, but that's what he told. I apologize. I don't have any more details on it just because that's more of the finance. But we already have the track, correct? Correct. So, and then, right. And so I just want to make you aware that that, and it's obviously, I definitely want to make the committee aware because now we'll ask for the truck for next year. So now you kind of have a heads up that we're, you know, we're going to try to request the truck. I asked for the top and take on What's that? These are for the meeting next. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you just want to leave, I'll, yeah. I can. Also, yep. can you leave the microphone here? Sure. Do you need the, well, the owl I got for my ass? Never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can leave. Yeah, I'll leave the black bag. No, thanks. Thanks. Any other questions on the that item? You can answer my question. I was hoping someone approves besides this in the department. That's okay. Okay, go ahead. Yep. And 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 feel free to call Director Collar to see how why you know what what sets these up where it's just informational only. I, mean, I, know, I, I know when uh, Director Fitzgerald was here, there was quite a few um, informational only items too. I mean, I also know there are personnel managers that they can do personal finance committee and don't have to talk to the committee about it. So. Well, and, and what, I'm, what I'm actually saying is even at the personal finance committee, it's just for informational purposes okay. only too. Right. Um, so it'll be presented to them as informational <clears throat> only as well. Okay. Um, the other one, same, um, similar <clears throat> circumstance. Um, so the fact um, we were finishing up Asylum Bridge, what ended up actually happening um, is we had, we were under budget for the Asylum Bridge um and we only had seven thousand left to work to do we just had the asphalt work to do on the north end so we did not i did not come to the personal and finance committee to transfer any money over because i, I figured let's let's get that account closed out we have seven thousand to go it's asphalt on the other side but what ended up happening is the um the concrete cracked <coughs> when looking at the design more and what ended up happening is the concrete flexed um because so you have the abutment which the abutments are where the bridge attaches to. And it's really thick, I mean, it goes deep into the ground. It's very thick concrete. Then you have the um, attached to that and they just, so Excel Engineering did it as one piece um, and the you know, county staff before my time approved of it. But basically it was one piece. So that one piece though, so that landing was only four inches thick. Well, what ends up going to happen? What, what's going to happen is with only a four-inch piece and, and a larger, um, I mean, multiple-foot piece, what ended up happening is it flexed and it cracked at the weak point. So what we ended up doing is we ended up um, so the contractor uh, replaced up to four inches just because it's not approved yet. So they they replaced that within budget, but then I added an additional um, kind of like a grade beam as we've been talking about around the um, around the transition that was only four inches so that we made about six or seven inches so that way it's thicker around the edge and then we put rebar to tie the two pieces together and then we added additional asphalt um, because we were looking at the grade um, around where we're going to have to bow and restore and so we added a little bit of additional asphalt so basically the changes that i made to reinforce that area so it doesn't happen in the future that is what this um, additional 3,474 is. The contractor replaced everything else um, as, or would have replaced it as is, but we wanted to reinforce it so it doesn't happen again. So now, because it's tied in with the rebar, everything will move together because um, now they're two separate pieces, but now it's gonna have more, more girth to it. 
So what ended up happening is uh, Fox Crossing Dog Park, um, we're still doing some signs, we're still doing some work there, still obviously have some seating to do, some things to do there, but there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle room in there um, and it's in the same project line item. So basically we were just taking some of that and, and putting the asylum because we didn't ask, I, I think we were in the positive by 20 or 30,000 in asylum. So if we would have just carried it over, but by the time this happened, it was past the ability to carry over. I think that was in March, the carryovers, the last round of carryovers were sent through personal and finance, I think. So does anyone have any questions about this? Once again, this is for informational purposes, um, but obviously I wanted to bring it to the committee so you guys are aware of, of these items, not just going to personal and finance. I, I guess if we're closing that out, how did yeah. we ever come home when you want the bill of extra for taking them? Um, hasn't Never hasn't re asked for a change. They wanted 36,000 and we denied it. And yep. never came back for it. Correct. I guess that's good Yep. So we're we're good there. So so this is all for additional stuff that I requested, and that's why to make it. And it wasn't in the plan, so you can't expect the contractor to do it because they just went off plans. So and this project, this is an example of one of those projects. We hired Excel. They're by an engineering group. But the point is, is we instead of letting them just do it we kind of took stuff out of it and said, okay, we'll do that, you do this. And it was just, it, it wasn't a complete contract. Um, and so Excel wasn't as on the hook as a lot of times these engineers are if they don't design it correctly. So, I mean, overall we were still, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at the project as a whole, we were still within budget um, and actually under budget, but obviously yeah, we could use it. Well, good point, good point, actually. Yeah, I yeah. guess if we go, yeah, I went these three I suppose we go way back. I went these three to know. That's a good point. I went these three to know that the Parks Committee, the Parks Committee had I forgot recommended that. something I wasn't a whole lot cheaper and the Personal Finance Committee wanted something different and cost a lot more. So we were more smart than them on this issue. Right? Well, Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that bridge should I mean those, those those bridges the way they're built that's why they're built rusty too I mean they're built to last so yes to his point actually it, it better at the very least last fifty years um, but it shouldn't even last longer than that you know you might already be looking at abutment fixes at that point but the bridge is probably going to be still good so should be um, <laughs> item ten staff updates anything from I just have um, more Rick and Rick no I, I, I you know. I don't have anything. Well, I mean, I have some things that will definitely relate to them. Let me just go back to the agenda just in case we do actually have someone on, on Zoom. So I just want to. Um, so, staff updates. Um, so, um, well, we don't need the grunt. Yeah, um, we're working. I know a couple a couple meetings ago, I mentioned uh, we're working on uh, with the company on potentially replacing the sign at the Sunnyview Expo. Um, they did get us, so I just want to bring that up because they did get us a draft agreement to, to review. Um, that's a corp council. I hope that we could have it on the agenda for July, but worst case scenario, August, because um, it does have to go back to them and we'll have to go back and forth a few times before we, it's ready for a committee. Um, but that's, you know, they would be leasing land from us essentially. We get a brand new sign, but they would advertise on the sign. So that's something we'll um, be a discussion item at a future meeting. Um, the park ranger, our new park ranger starts on Thursday. Um, so that'll that'll be nice because like I mentioned, we only have had the one and especially weekends, it's difficult to ask them to do every single weekend. Um, so we've been, we do have one park ranger from last year who said he was coming back the, uh, a couple weeks before the summer said he couldn't, but he said he would cover a weekend or two to help. So he's been at least covering a weekend a month to help with that. Um, uh, we, we're we're in we're in event season and um, um, just things going on. Uh, you know, Oshkosh in the water. We had to start with the Mung Festival. Um, there's been events over there every weekend. So we do have Life Fest coming up. They start moving in. Um, they're starting to do some things out there ready, more just kind of layout type stuff. Um, but they'll be starting to really come in on Friday, and then they do set up all next week with their event next weekend, and then at the end of July is the county fair. But we have horse shows even in between all that we have a 4-H horse show and then we have one other horse show too between so July is one of our busiest months and then we do at this point still have a concert in August so it'll be a bit busy month and a half and you know then there's all the other park things going on and that is going on yeah country in August at this point it is still going on but there has not been advertisements on it so um, and then we are meeting with um, the Labor Day or the Hmong Labor Day Festival same group we're meeting with the 
um, the group uh, next week, no, this week, this week, Friday, um, they want to talk. Uh, so we're meeting with them in um, OYSC with fields to see about uh, flag football. And um, I think they want to add bag toss too. Um, so and talk through their contract. Um, so we'll be meeting with them on Friday. So that's also an event that closes out our summer. Um, so that's another big one. Um, we also have um, uh, you, um, Oshkosh, uh, Super Soccer Saturday too. So just just here we're too. Another big soccer event. When is that? Um, that one is in uh, August. August. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, Wyawa, uh, we meet on the Wyawash Trail Swap. That'll be coming to this committee to kind of get you guys caught up to speed. Um, and we are pro uh, proposing to um, the city of Oshkosh will take a portion of the Wyawash Trail in Oshkosh. Uh, we've been working on that for well, that's been a ten. That's been being worked on for ten years. Um, so. We've, we've, we're making headway, um, quite a bit of headway, actually. Uh, we got some approvals from ATC and we're working on an MOA. Um, let's see here. Lastly, point I'm meeting with, um, it was timely. I actually talked with the Archaeological um, Society today, uh, the State Historical Society today, because they called on, someone called on something with Lasley Point. So I had someone to talk to and we were to set up a meeting to meet out there, um, like we saw on the tour. So um, hopefully we'll figure out what we can, can't do, and what uh, can I was explaining can what we, we want to do. Can we like, get a new sign out there? In the early new Not sure yet. I'll meet with them in two weeks and then they'll let me know. <laughs> so we're going to be right on the site. Did you still want me to email the homeowners next to? Uh, we can hold off on that for right now. Let's okay. see what the, let's see what they'll allow us to do. Okay. And then we'll have to figure out. And I shall probably ask them where the extent of the property is. And <coughs> the store part of the property is. Because okay, I don't know if it goes goes off our site or not, or if there's restrictions even to people within a certain amount of feet from the property. There might be it's possible. Okay. So, Thank you. and that's all. That's all I have. Okay. Um, we're just we're we're busy keeping up with things. So, um, community members update took around this way. Rachel, I'm good. Good. No You're good. Yes. All right. All right. It's good to hear. Mr. Manager Binder. By the light office, can we get a, a seasonal out there and, and trim that brush out of the so they can fish off that? I mean, we haven't been able to fish there for three years, and all that stuff is growing up in the rocks. They can't cast off there. That's like one of the best places, I guess, to catch walleye. Yeah. So I've got three calls already that asking if we could get out there and clean that up so they can fish off that again. Yep, I will take a look at that here tomorrow. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing. Nothing for me. Um, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, about Life Fest, you said you might get passes again go into here. The reason, right? I don't well, know. so and let me say what Life Fest is a so how I explained it is um, any private, well, everyone's renting that facility, it's a private function, or they can open up to the public. Um, Life Fest in the past has, yes, given um, the board members or committee members. So I don't know if they're going to give more this okay. year, but they typically do. My my other um, point, and I know we talked about this on the tour a little bit, was that if a county board member wants to, or county board member or parks committee member wants to go there to see how event, the event works from a standpoint of setup and all that, there is a there is a strong argument, and, and I can basically get you guys in from a staff standpoint with staff badge to basically observe the event, so you can see how it works on county grounds and how what we do and what you know what how it affects the county grounds. So yeah, from a work standpoint, no matter what you'll well, be able to get in. Now trying, in terms of passes, that I can't speak. Okay, to that's what I'm trying to get at. And this whole committee, because I want to see how it's set up, especially as a stage area, because we can talk all you want, but if nothing's being set up and nothing's you know going to be there it's hard to imagine that and that's why i say that right i'm not saying just go there and listen to music or that's right. fine but that's not the point i mean you see how it's set up and then maybe i don't think we've had life fest come talk to us for a number of years steve have we and the last couple of years and i know the stage when they built the stage here it's quite frequently but after they built the stage we really have that up and sure. I, I would like to get insight from them and a for us to see how it's set up, and then insight to them. How can we help? You know, get more events at that. What do we have to do to do that? And that's well, firsthand knowledge. And I can talk to the organizer, John, um, too, and see if he'd want to do a recap after <clears throat> asking the if he can come to one of these meetings in mm -hmm. late summer, fall, um, do a recap of this event and how it went. 
Um, and yeah, exactly. No, so from the center, sorry, when you ask about passes, that's more like I can't just give out passes. I don't I have any passes. I, 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 but in terms of getting in there to see as a county employee and see how things are set up, oh, yeah, absolutely. We can work on that. Yeah. Now, do you guys have badges at all? Does HR give you badges? No, no. no. Last year, they gave us passes. Oh, yeah. Yep, so that's perfect. So exactly. So having a um, county logo on it, what you want, exactly. That's, you know, what Rachel, between that and um, me just talking to Life Fest and saying, hey, I'm going to have some parks committee members so that want to come and see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, between that and my communication with them, that's so you, you, Stephen didn't know this, and we don't have to do it. When I first got in this committee, we had our own little badge, the own little photo, because they wanted a photo mm -hmm. of it. But sure. you don't have to do that. Okay, that's one point. The second thing I'm going to bring up, um, do you think it'd be valuable if we surveyed all our fellow supervisors and what their thoughts of county parks are and what they know about county parks, the system, whatever? Um, if it's so, I would probably ask you to come next month to bring what questions. I don't expect to be a very long survey. Of then, Adam, I, I would ask the county clerk to send us out to everyone by email or mail and give them a good month to fill it out. I just think we should do a little, um, I want to do this a few months ago, but we still can do it. You know, this is a survey of what our county board members um, know and think about the county park system. I, I was glad we had two of them come on the tour, but I think we should try to reach out to more of them. So if you think it's a good idea, next, then next month we'll, we'll develop this. Four or five questions. Is that okay with it, Adam? Oh, I can. Yeah, I, I can. Just want, and, if you and, guys give me the questions, I can put it in the Survey Monkey and, and then, then send it to help you send it out or send then, it to the clerk to send out. You or, said you told me you wanted to be the clerk. I'm the clerk. Can send out. I say yeah. Should we send this we'll out? Send them the link. And we'll say we'll give them a month for if we did it by next month's meeting by Labor Day or something. You could send it to us. So if you think that's a good idea? I'll bring those questions um, next month. Okay. Uh, okay. Next item um, is the uh, next meeting date. Let me tell you, as chairman, um, I told us maybe one or two, maybe not. Um, the next meeting date would be on July 25th. Um, I'm going to be in Colorado at a Maple Convention that day. Um, so if we're going to have it that day, it's going to have to be very early, given the parameters of the schedule. Adam, we had talked, and you said we might have it a different day. You, you, you said you asked if a different day would work, and yeah. I said the days you gave me were fine. What day was that? You asked about the 25th or the 18th. Okay. And I said either either is fine as right now my calendar is open. Either those work for either of those work for me. Okay. It's on my calendar right now for the 25th. Okay. 18th. July 18th. Um, That's that fall. It's, it's a, a Monday. Monday. It's, it's a Monday. Monday. It's Monday. Monday. It's Monday. 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 Yeah, it's the day before the uh, county board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rachel? I'll be in North Carolina. On the 18th? I'll come back to the 18th at 4.30. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to make it for the county board meeting. I planned an app. Yeah, you can. I wasn't going on that. I was going to take from a NATO convention in Las Vegas. We were late, so whatever. Um, so you're saying if it was on the 25th, it would have to be way early because you have something going on. Well, you say? let me I'm back sorry. up. Let me back up. I could do Zoom in on the 25th. Um, and I don't know the problem, but. We just passed a rule. We can't do that. Well, Mike can attend the meeting. He no longer has voting privileges. Yeah. So I'd rather have you here, okay. if that's OK. Um, could we do? You said you're gone till the 19th, right? What about yeah. Wednesday, the 20th, the day after? I'm here for a couple of like that. Oh. Oh. Like when you get back? The 25th. Yeah, just what if we did it 26 or 24? That's true. I'm, I'm fine with listening. We're going to have a lot of topics in July. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. I can't attend even by Zoom because I'll be on a plane. What about the 26 or <laughs> Well, hey, what about the 26 or 27? <laughs> Yeah, the 25th or the 27th, I can make both of those. No, you can't make the 25th. You're landing on the. I can't. Well, the 25th, yeah, I can't make. No, I, I'm landing on the 18th. 26th, oh. yes. Or on the I'm 19th, trying I'm landing. So to I can make the, the 25th. I can make the 27th. meeting at 6.30. So if we could do it before. Yeah, okay, so 26, you're saying? I just was throwing I out some ideas that are close to the 25th. Yeah. I, could do, I could do that, Mike. What? What? The Tuesday, the 26th. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can do it too. Yeah, I have parks and beautification on, so it's just I'll go over with Okay. <laughs> All right. This is what, Thank you for the sacrifice, sir. Well, this is the way you're going to do it. We now have the 26. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, what clear time? I don't know. I'll, I'll be late again. But I've only two more times I'll be late. Why change it? Is that when you're, are you still mowing or something? Or yeah. You... I, I, I don't have a mind. Let me put it this way. I don't mind saying, for your sake, over 315. If you're going to be very 15, if you think so. Well, I'll let you know because I'm going to be a little late as long as you have your core. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Well, would, you make it by, you go. would you make it by 330? I'll make it by 315. Well, I would have is been here really, earlier. Is that too uh -huh. late for you? The guy I was supposed to pick up wasn't home. Um, <laughs> let's go. What time do you want? Three, you tell me. He says 315, he can make it. She says that's perfect. And uh, I'm okay with that too. What I can do. Anything they're going to vote on, we can do the opposite of what other commit. We can put that off until you get here. Okay. Um, and if we waited 15 minutes today, um, and Rachel and Rachel Karen didn't kill me, so I, I can I can I can put out that. So Tuesday, the 26th of July, 315, same room, same place. Everyone agree? Same and room, please, same place, just in the future. Later. Like I said last week, if you have a problem with a certain day, fourth Monday, tell me and tell the rest of us as quick as possible. I'm flexible. Okay. But, you know, you can't tell me that the day of the meeting. I can't wait, you know, because here it's three o'clock and I'm the only one here. So, but we're fine. July 26, 3 15 p.m. Okay. Um, Thank you. Future agenda items. And we have some visitor. 20, 23, 24, Senator Utility, access to Lake Peter Moore, Wash Trail, um, 4 H agreement at the Centerville Expo Center. Anything else you want the committee or Adam to put on the agenda? If you don't have it now, call me during the month and we like, yeah. um, can we just get an update on the well or the Okay. Yeah, and these were just some items I did not want us to miss because we talked about them last week. Okay, perfect. Thank sure. you. So that's why I put them on. Okay, now I can't remember. This is something I learned in parks, just that you learned on UW Extension. Um, something about 4 H agreement, Sunnyview. Didn't we have I learned this that that we actually, 4-H actually gave us property for the sunny view or something and that this notion of making arrangements where we're charging them for something didn't seem right no. because they they were the original landowners or something. Does, does this sound familiar to anybody? Okay, okay. So they, when they sold the fairgrounds, they gave all the money to the county to help build the sunny view. So okay, and I'm no, not dreaming. The county executive after is he wants to put it right because there's Going to be a time when no one's going to realize that they did that yeah and then they're going to say well why are they getting that for nothing and they're not really getting it for nothing because when they sold that where pick and save is now that whole strip line, right right and where her credit union is mm -hmm. the fair on that yeah. and they took all that money and, and partnered with the county to build that expo center so that's why they got what they have mm -hmm. yeah yeah we, we we talked about it briefly last week okay um, and, and and yeah, just he's, uh, yeah, absolutely they did. And then since just one thing to remember, since then, you know, obviously there's been large capital projects that the county has paid for all by themselves. Um, I know, like, but we still covered need, arena. I mean, we still need to remember. No, oh, it's yeah. because the it's because the 4-H owned it first and, yep. and gave it to the county, correct, or sold it to the they county. They put the money from the last site and put all that money towards this site. Okay, and I could I could try okay. to figure out how much that was even, or but I mean that might be a little bit, but that's from '88, but. Um, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And remember, it's up to the committee. It's it's a it's a fee, so it's up to the committee and a policy. What do you guys want to do? So and we just need to formalize it. Really wants to get an agreement in writing. Is the way he explained it to me. Yeah, he, he isn't opposed to not charging them. Right. He just wants an agreement in writing. So like. So like when you're dead and there's no more tribal memory, somebody's going to remember. You know why this has going on. Exactly. Right. Don't die. Or like when Rick, why, when we have a contract in writing that this is why we're letting him use the, yes. the property. Then it will stay like that 
until some other committee, parks committee, decides to change it or tries to change it. I think this is it's, it's like when Rick and I, brand new people to our positions, don't know because yeah. we we don't. And then you know another um, granted we'll talk about this next month, but another piece of that puzzle is so also think think about the charge, but also think about when you look at the 4-H agreement, the bumping, because we also, it says that we should, we bump them if there's another event. We don't right now. So we, that's another thing we'll definitely want to make sure we look at and define. Are we doing it or are we not, you know, because if we're not bumping them, we should just take it out. Yeah, Which, and I think like the horse shows in the fair are not bumps, but it's like the sheriff. The horse shows are bumps. They can be. They yeah, can They be. can be, but we, we, we don't, but they can. The sheriff department uses our facility probably 60 days a year and Sheriffs, we don't charge them one penny. Um, state correctional. Yeah, we there's a there's a lot of well, we don't charge nothing and basically yeah, but we charge 4-H though. No, we don't charge 4-H at all. We don't. No. Oh, so oh that, we do. We charge them the 25% for the one show for, for the main oh, show. Okay. I thought well, it was any time. No, sorry. Okay. That's 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 what got us all started on this. We charge them four hundred eighty dollars. We right. don't know where that four hundred eighty dollars came from. But they we were told it's a handshake agreement. For the fair, we don't charge nothing, right? No, we give them money. We give them <laughs> no, it's, we, we don't charge them anything. Um, and then the county as a whole gives them dollars. Normally, we give them 60000 Fairs aren't profitable. There's no fairs that make money. You know, like all those kids in 4-H, the county picks up all that expense. You know, you have to basically have all that waste. And, and you know, the, how do you charge kids for the straw? The, yeah. Waste that the animals make. The fair pays for all that, but it, the fair wouldn't have to make enough money on admissions to pay for that. So the county subsidizes the fair. Normally, we give them sixty thousand a year. This year, we get one hundred thousand because of the COVID and, and, and we're in bad financial shape. Mm -hmm. You know, but if we wouldn't do that, there'd be no fair. You know, so it, it's like that's why it's Winnebago County Fair. We're the main sponsor of the fair. Yeah. Is there anything else? To this? I know someone's on there at five o'clock at the meeting on five pretty soon. Any other okay. discussion? No. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Powers. By George Powers, second by. Second. Mr. Roger Dowling. All in favor, somebody say aye. 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 All opposed. What are you groaning about? <laughs> it's just five show. You know, everyone's going to say, yeah, they're getting out of here. <laughs> I never heard anyone say what I heard. Adam, before you run out, I'm did sure. you have to ask?